We flipped a coin, okay? You and me. You and me. Coin flip is sacred. Y'all ready for a show today, baby? Ah. Go time, baby. We've been waiting all week for this. This is where it happens right here, man. We man up, we stand up. We man up, we stand up. Oh, God. Welcome, everybody, to the Coin Flip Week 14 of the 2022 NFL season. Good morning to you. Gup here. Well, it'll probably be lunchtime or so by the time this uh, gets posted and out, but it is early morning Friday for me. Happy Friday to all out there. Uh, we got a, a big bye week this week. Uh, six teams on by, making it a 10-game slate on Sunday. Um, some big boy teams are either on by or in the uh, night games. So interesting slate for sure. Uh, definitely a lot of ways to get be different. There's some clear chalk places, uh, a lot of things to talk about. If you'd like to join Gup's Corner right now, use the code COIN. Get 20% off any package. Includes a risk uh, seven-day risk-free trial. You can start out weekly, go up to monthly, monthly, go up to annual. That code and percentage off stays with you the entire time as long as you remain a member. First seven days are on us. Cancel any time and you will never see a charge. Rate and review us on iTunes certainly helps grow the pod. We are, uh, you know, what, four weeks away from getting towards the playoffs. We got bowl season rolling out starting next week. Uh, and then we'll be uh, ramping up for PGA's return in January. Uh, I'll have a few, probably a couple pods at least out towards the end of December. Um, previewing next year. Uh, certainly, we're rolling out a revamped, up, fully updated PGA uh, golf tools in general uh, with updates coming to our Green Machine lineup builder optimizer as well. Looking forward to 2023. Uh, should be a great year for all. Subscribe and like this video on YouTube. By doing this or the iTunes things, this gets you into our big drawings. Uh, next one, probably we'll do some drawings Christmas week. And then we'll be full focus kind of going into the new year uh, and then our huge annual March to the Masters giveaway that we do each and every year. In the description, tell me your favorite running back, $6,500 and up, and that'll get you into the next drawing as well. Normal uh, script today, we'll go through our plays, fades, and values by each position, favorite stacks, main stacks and mini stacks, two favorite uh, against the spread lines I like currently, my upset of the week, and then we'll do some prize pick and underdog plays of the week as well. As I mentioned, 10 games on the slate for main slate Sunday. By week teams, Falcons, Packers, Colts, Bears, Saints, Commanders. Uh, probably the biggest bye week of the year. Um, so there's no buys during the Thanksgiving week in general. There were 16 games total. They kind of make up for it this week. Since they went to week the 18 weeks of regular season, they've moved buys out, uh, which kind of made a lot of people in the your season-long fantasy leagues have to kind of change the way they do things. Uh, most season-longs are either starting playoffs this week or this is their last week of regular season. So it kind of a little frustrating there when you get uh, that many buys in one week, but nothing we can do about it. Biggest uh, spreads on the slate, Buffalo minus 10, Cowboys minus 18, both at home. Five road favorites this week, including last night. Uh, the Raiders were a road favorite that did not come through. Uh, Baker comes in after, I think, the second series, um, plays the rest of the game, leads them to a comeback in the fourth quarter, 17-16. Ownership preview this week. Um, it's pretty – I mean, the Vikings-Lions are going to be the highest own. I don't – you know, I'll do full updates tonight, start doing our um, – you know, as we – Normally, by the time you get all the updates from Friday practice, you can pretty much know, um, rule out a lot of people. There's still some that'll be, you know, game day decision type stuff, but clears up a little bit by Friday. Um, we get our final content rolling in Saturday, Saturday night, and into Sunday. 
I don't. I still think these two. Not only are they going to be the highest owned, I think it's going to be fairly split between them. Um, sometimes, so like the Cowboys Texans are the second highest projected. They're all uh, the next three games are all right with right by each other. Cowboys Texans Chiefs Broncos Bengals Browns, but the Cowboys Texans it's eighty percent Dallas twenty four percent Houston. So by and large, Dallas is a, a they will be the highest owned team probably on the slate. High game, but you have Houston being one of the lowest owned on the slate. Whereas Detroit, Minnesota, pretty much even on what I have right now. Um, you get some low games down there: Philly, New York, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Tampa Bay, uh, San Fran are all below seventy percent total game ownership. Uh, so some spots you can take advantage of for leverage. Um, kicking off with quarterbacks, I'm going to go to Burrow first. I don't know. I kind of like my values this week. We'll see how that works out. Um, Higgins is one we're watching, mainly because he got put on the injury report after Wednesday, I believe. Um, Or maybe even last night. I can't remember. But wasn't on it. And then something with the hamstring, which is never good, especially for a wide receiver. Red flags there. You know, but I still like, you know, Chase, Boyd. Uh, The tight end looks to be out. Hurst looks to be out. So you could see Wilcox um, get some reps there, but maybe that puts Burrow down in ownership a little bit. Um, Seven thousand dollars, kind of in the middle. If you're dropping below Hertz, Allen, who are clearly the highest price, and Mahomes, um, which they have been most of the year. Cleveland, Cincinnati has a knack for for being higher scoring games at times. Um, they are what second, yeah, second highest scoring game projected right now on the slate uh 46 and a half total points i i like a lot about it i think um you could see a big mixing game again if assuming he's healthy and out of the protocol but you know he's a guy that if i'm going to pay up he, he's probably my favorite right now uh prescott i like him a lot it's just a, it's just a caveat of how do you think it goes early you know because if it's a big pollard zeke type game they get up quick maybe a defensive touchdown whatever, and all of a sudden it's 21, 24, 3, 24, 7, something like that, does he do much? Um, the flip side of it could be because of that, a lot of people talk about it, they don't want to play him. He's somewhat low owned for 6,500 in what should be a smash spot, highest team total, implied team total on the slate. Maybe he does a lot early, and he's the reason they get out, and it winds up being a great play at a decently low owned, you know, talk 7, 8, 9%, something like that at that price really opens up some things really depends on how you see the script going there. Um, I do have him on the, you know, short list for the, for the pool right now. Definitely. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him as we go into Sunday values. The easiest is golf. Um, probably will be one of the highest owned top three. I would say for sure. Um, it'd be interesting to see between him and cousins, how it shakes out by the time we get to Sunday and, and people looking through things, you save the 500 bucks but probably could be a little bit higher on. They are at home. They have been looking good. They're getting healthy. You know, both running backs look good. Um, Jameson Williams is back. Didn't play much last week. I still want to be early on that. So definitely want to be listening to what we think they might do this week with him. Um, You know, coming off the big injury at Alabama, he can just – does he have the potential to break his slate? Yes. Could he do it this early? Probably not, but he's going to be cheap enough that uh, we want to keep an eye out when we think they'll go in. Cousins maybe looked upon as a little bit safer. You're only paying 500 bucks more. I think they'll both be in the top three of ownership come Sunday. I would probably just fade one and play the other. Right now, I lean golf um, you know, at that price. Against the Minnesota secondary, he again, at home. I like all those things. I'll take him at 5600 bucks, And then my next value is more on the percent side, but still not too expensive. 6200 bucks, Got him between 5 and 7% right now, and that's Geno Smith. I think Carolina has – there's some perception out there when you see teams like Carolina, Houston per se, but Houston's just terrible everywhere, that you're just like, oh, it's just a bad team. They actually have a decent run defense, and I think Seattle – whether Walker plays or not, will struggle with some there, and I think they're going to have to throw the ball. And I think they can throw the ball at home against Carolina. I kind of think this could be a good spot to go to. Like, I'd pivot off of Cousins, pay 100 bucks more, and have Geno in my stacks, and then go to golf, you know, if I want to get in that Minnesota game. But I could do a small Geno stack. It could just be Geno Lockett, Geno Metcalf, uh, Geno Lockett Font, 
uh, fan, no fan, something like that, and then get me a little mini correlated out of Minnesota Detroit to be different. Um, so, so I don't hate that at all. Basically, I don't. You could almost build your team like you would have Cousins and just move to Geno. Now, obviously, your one one off would have to be Lockett or Metcalf in there to make sense. But I, I don't hate that, I, and you don't have to get a lot of that game. You don't have to have any Carolina, but I do think there are some options there, depending on how the health of the running back looks once we get to Sunday. Uh, and then all obviously DJ Moore's playing uh, decent right now and, and priced well. So Gino five to seven percent, six two hundred bucks. He's on my list. My fade, like I said, I would fade one of Cousins golf. Mine's going to be Cousins, obviously for what I just said. Running backs, I like Cook. I think Cook will be one of the lower slash under owned pieces of this game as everybody tries to force St. Brown, Jefferson. Um, those it makes it really tough if you want to go quarterback one of those both of those whatever um, to go pay up you know 7300 for Cook so one way to get different out of the Minnesota Detroit game would be a Geno mini stack and then then build some Minnesota Detroit another way would be to emphasize Cook in that build get different elsewhere maybe that's the build where you go cheap with um, Cook you know, Jameson Williams or Chark, if we don't think uh, Jameson's going to get involved, Jefferson type deal. Um, or you go Cook, St. Brown, Hawkinson as a mini stack out of there. Uh, maybe you have golf in that build, or you could still go do the Geno deal and do a three man mini out of that game. There's several ways to be different, even though it's going to be the clear chalk game for sure. Uh, he's a piece I like. I think they'll be able to run the ball well. Because that's another reason I'm a little bit down on Cousins and, and maybe even Jefferson. Jeff, Jefferson can just get there. He can get there in a half, so I, I can never rule him out. It's just do you want to pay the $9,000 uh, and can you make it work uh, in that scenario? But but Cook's the one that I, I think can be a little bit different uh, when you're building your pieces. I like Mixon, $6,900. i am assuming, you know, especially with the extra week off, that he'll be fully healthy, um, out of the protocol, all that kind of stuff. Great game environment. Cleveland struggles against the run. He can also catch the pass. I know P. Ryan's been doing well. I love P. Ryan, you know, former Sooner. Um, but I do think Mixon, when he gets back, will still assume most of his role because we're talking about a concussion, not really like a uh, high ankle sprain or something like that where it's – once he's clear out of that protocol, then I think we're good to go there. Maybe some people, you know, steer away from it, which would be great. Anything under 20% on Mixon this week at 6,900 in this game script, I love. Uh, and I think you could go Burrow, Mixon, Chase, or Burrow, Mixon, Boyd. Let's say Higgins is out. Um, and be fine there just because of his involvement in the passing game as well. Values I like this week. Uh, Pacheco, I don't mind that. Kind of burned a little bit of people that last week. I think um, 5,700, good discount off of some of the guys like Barkley, McCaffrey, Henry, um, Good game environment, Detroit. I mean, Denver has a good D. Wish Lamar would have played all last week. That was one. I think it was one of my few losses in the NFL last week, betting wise. Um, it turned out to be kind of a battle. The the, the uh, teasers didn't go well uh, that I had last week, but still hitting sixty uh, percent on the year NFL, almost fifty eight point six percent in college football as we head to bowl season. So. Um, potentially one of my best football seasons ever, depending on how bowl and the rest of NFL goes uh, in general. So if you want to check out some bets over there, go check those out. Um, <laughs> last night I was looking between, you know, back and forth. I was waiting to kind of get the whole Baker news, you know, trying to figure – my gut was he was going to play the majority. Uh, and, it, and, you know, the two bets I was looking at was either over – 41 or Rams plus seven going back and forth, back and forth. Cause we couldn't get clarity on the Baker. I went ahead and just took the over, um, wish I'd have done the Rams, but you know, so off to Oh, one start this week, got some plays already out for Sunday. Uh, looking forward to that, but Pacheco, I like, I think he's, I don't say do, I think he has the potential to have a really big game at times. Um, and I think he could do it against Denver. I think they could focus on the run some, I think he can get involved in many areas. Again, this is if you're trying to find some savings pieces, I think he'll be lower owned as we get towards Sunday because we're going to see some, you know, does Walker wind up being ruled out? Um, you know, some of these questionable guys, uh, Devontae Foreman, where does where does that look like? Um, you know, that may put him a lot lower owned than what he should be or could be in a very one-off 
you know, make your lineup different, especially if you're looking at large, you know, Millie maker type fields like that. That's a play that I don't mind. I like James Cook, 4,600. I just been wait. I have him in some season long stuff. Uh, he was actually my pick in my rookie draft. Excuse me. And um, just holding on him, holding on him, holding on him. Finally gets a little bit of a breakout last week. I, I had heard, I've, you know, some sources, stuff like that, that they they anticipated Cook getting more and more role towards the end of the season as they go to playoffs. Fresh legs, stuff like that. He gets to know the system. He's a stud. Was a stud in college. I think he's still going to have a pretty big role this week, uh, similar to the last time. And he, and he does get involved out of the backfield. We saw that. So, 4600 bucks. it's hard not to go there. Um, for the upside you can get there. And it makes a lot of things work uh, when we're struggling for a little bit of value uh, this week. There are going to be some running back spots, but um, definitely time you get a $4,600 running back that you think has some, you know, double-digit upside, I think that's good. I like Swift. I need to see how popular it gets. I don't want to overreact to last week, but w- you can go look at the stats. Uh, you know, backs out of the backfield against Minnesota has been successful. Passing in general has been successful against Minnesota. Highest slate on the game. I still think some will struggle a little bit seeing Jamal Williams, what he's done, and Swift. Jamal Williams much more touchdown dependent than I think Swift is. Swift is definitely getting more healthy from his injury. 5800 bucks. I think that makes things work. That's another reason I think Pacheco could get lower ownership because I think most may talk themselves into Swift, especially if doing those those game stacks out of that Minnesota-Detroit game. Fade for me. uh, Walker would be one if he winds up playing – even if he doesn't wind up playing, I don't know if I go to like Travis Homer, who would probably get the nod. Cause I think Carolina is going to be all right against the Rundy and, and kind of force. That's kind of my script there. That, that's why I'm big on Gino in that passing game. Um, if he doesn't play, then I'd probably say Henry would be a guy that I don't want much of just with the other options. I'd rather pay up, um, you know, look at paying up a quarterback or coming over here to the wide receiver side and going, you know, pay up for a Jefferson, uh, something like that over Henry with some of the options we have a little bit cheaper at running back this week. Uh, so Walker or Henry would be the ones I'm looking to fade. Wide receiver plays, Lockett's the first one. That's pretty easy uh, just hearing what I think about that game, 6500 bucks. And, I I mean, right now I got him sub 10%. I don't think he's getting a lot of love. Um, so fairly cheap comparatively to some of those other wide receivers up there. Um, and we're not getting much ownership. Chase, I do like. Obviously, if Higgins is out, that puts even more emphasis on Chase. Bumps Boyd. Um, could see some, you know, Irwin would be a guy that gets in the mix there. Uh, and then maybe a bump to the tight end. Uh, I think it's Wilcox that would wind up playing. Um, yeah, assuming Hur- Hurst is doubtful now. So, most of the time that doesn't turn out too well. I like St. Brown. That's a duh. You know, everybody's going to like him. He's probably going to be the highest own. seven 800 bucks. Um, if you can get around it, you know, getting to Jefferson over St. Brown, you're going to save quite a bit of ownership, but it is $1,200 more. The reason being why he's so much um, more owned is mainly because of the price there. Uh, I think both could go off. If you could somehow build a line that they get you both in there, um, you probably got to go some cheap at running backs. So it would be a, maybe a way to get a little bit different. And I like Devonte Smith. I, I kind of think, I think he's quietly going under just kind of the radar per se. I think it's going to be somewhat of a more ugly battle between Philly and New York. 6300 bucks. A.J. Brown is $1,700 more coming off the monster game against, you know, his old team, the Titans. I don't mind Devontae. I think 6300 bucks can catch those short, quick passes. Um, I think there's some potential for weather there. We'll keep an eye on that, which could maybe mean, hey, quick passes. We're not looking for the big fade to Brown type deal. And a little under the radar there. So, I don't mind him. 6300 bucks. I think that's a great play. Values I like. I think Thielen, if you want to go there, he'll probably get some ownership being in that good game environment. But 4900 bucks is really cheap. DJ Chark, I mentioned earlier, 4300 bucks. Another cheap piece from that game. Also, I said keep an eye on Williamson. Um, read the notes. Read what we can hear about when do they plan on getting him into the, the ball game even more and more as the season goes along. I want to be early on that because I, I think in the next four weeks he's going to have a huge game. It's just a matter of when. So, I like Hinton from the Broncos, which is something I didn't think I would say. But 3400 bucks. Sutton looks to be out. He's gotten he's had some double digit games already. Super cheap. Make some of that stuff work where I'm talking about Jefferson, St. Brown. Um, you know, maybe it's just a simple hit and Kelsey, you know, two man 
and then you build around that or you know hitting pacheco pacheco's cheap you know hitting and then you build around there it saves you a lot of money um gallup i like he's very much touchdown uh variant right now so getting a lot more looks the last two weeks getting some looks in the red zone if you go look on the stats uh on our site and go look at the red zone uh, chart you can kind of see the receptions touchdown all the targets and stuff like that he's high for dallas so and hadn't been there all year so the the problem with any wide receiver whether it be cd or him just like uh dak is if they get up early and we expect them to somehow and it's not involving that person you go with this game could get away in a hurry i mean it could be 31 to seven and a half time type of deal and, and how much usage a CD or Gallup are those going to get in the second half? I don't know. So, but he could be a big part of that 31 and it pays off, right? He's going to be under 10%, um, 4,600 bucks, make some things work. I, I don't mind him. If you want to take a, ri- a little bit more of a risk reward and a little bit more of a Millie maker type play, I don't mind that at all. My fate is AJ Brown just for that. I would in that game environment this week, I'd rather drop down to Devonte, save the money, um, and I don't want to play two pass catchers out of that game, so I'd fade A.J. Brown this week at 8K. And if I'm at 8K range, I'd rather drop 200 bucks to Brown or, or try to find a 1000 bucks to get up to Jefferson um, or drop 100 bucks to Jamar Chase, something like that. Tight end plays for me. Uh, Going to kick it off with Kelsey. I, I'm almost to the point where I think you could just you could play Kelsey. I'm not fully there. I think if you want to go Mahomes, I certainly – I haven't ruled him off the list because I think he's going to be super low-owned at 8000 bucks. Uh, Denver's D has been playing well. My only thing with Denver's D is like, when does this enough enough where they, I mean, even last week they hold a team to 10 points <laughs> and they have to, you know, and, and they're like, and we lose, right? You cover the spread by eight, eight and a half and you lose. Um, I just wonder when that, why are we trying so hard? And I know they're pros are not, no one's going to get on the field mainly because you don't want to get hurt if you, you know, but the comma pause to that would be if the chiefs jump on them early which Baltimore couldn't do, whether it be because Lamar went out or whatever, I do think the defense goes, well, shit, they already got 21 points. We're not scoring 21 points if we played this eight quarters of this game. Maybe that's what could get you, but I think that would involve Kelsey. So I do like Kelsey. Mahomes is going to be super low on, and that stack is just not going to be very popular because so many people are wanting to jam you know, the Detroit-Minnesota game. And if not, we we know people love Josh Allen Hurts, um, you know, that's 8,300. 8,100, and then even Burrow is going to be somewhat popular at 7,000. So I don't mind Kelsey. Probably my favorite play is going to be Hawkinson. He will be owned. He's in that game environment, revenge game, all that kind of stuff. 5,100 bucks, though. You know they're going to be trying to get him involved. Um, they do anyways. He's been doing well. Uh, even if he wasn't playing Detroit, or how's it? even if he wasn't from Detroit, I would like this going to be a great game for him. So I like it cheap. Is it quite a double tight end week? I, I always say if you're going Kelsey, you can bring the double tight end in because he's essentially a number one wide receiver, especially in that offense. So I don't look at it that way if I'm going Kelsey. I don't know that I would go like Hawkinson and then someone else is a double tight end. I would say my rule would be if Kelsey's in a lineup, I don't mind looking at a double tight end type situation. Value. Um, Chig O. I'm going to call him Chig O because I don't want to mess his last name up. I think it's Okawan, but uh, Okawa, I don't know how to say it. So I'm just going to go Chigo. Uh, We know how some names I can't get. Been getting more and more looks. I think I actually did. I think I I can't remember which game it was. Uh, He was on a showdown and I played him and he did all right. Um, Getting more looks. The offensive coordinator is talking about him saying he's earned more looks. Um, A great pivot off who I think will be the highest on, which is Dolchik over at Denver. 3,400 bucks. He could be. 20% 20% wouldn't shock me. And so you save 700 bucks coming down here to Chig. And I think he could be all right for that price. Um, you know, he gets a touchdown plus whatever three or four. I mean, he's had 10 targets the last two weeks. So I, you know, they're at home. They need a win. I don't mind him, you know, so th- that's one to keep an eye on my fade. I just kind of mentioned Dolchik. I don't want to pay 3,400 bucks for him and him be 20 something percent own. And I could take a chance down here and save some money. If I'm going to spend that money, um, I'd rather go up to, you know, maybe an Njoku if he's back. Um, or just go all the way up to your, your Schultz Hawkinson type, you, you know, and save money elsewhere on the slate. So I, I like Chigo this week for a value, fading the Dolchik thing, unless we just kind of get that he may not be as high on, but I think he will be. 
Um, Defensive-wise, Cowboys, for me, that's probably easy. It looks easy. A lot of people just don't pay up. I mean, I had so much Browns last week. Um, You know, kind of helped my main slate a lot. You know, it just looked too easy. And I get it, but people don't want to pay that price. I think the Millie Maker winner had the Browns D, you know. And I get it. I'm not expecting 30 points, but this D is – we just saw it versus the Colts last week. And we saw the Houston, what they did versus the Browns last week. So, this D can turn some turnovers, sacks – Low scoring, which low scoring is never a reason to really play that. I know you get bonus points for it, but more so we're going to want big spread. They're going to be throwing it, all those things. I'll pay up, and I think that the ownership stays in line because there's some okay, you know, lower price Ds in decent situations. Um, I like the 49ers as well, so if you want to save a little money, they're at home. We saw Brady he did well there in those last couple drives, but he that O line is struggling to protect, and this D is legit number one D in the league right now. I'll take San Francisco at home, thirty two hundred bucks. So if you want to save six hundred bucks, they're probably going to be a three or four percent owned D. I don't mind that. Values, I think the number one that everybody goes to is Pittsburgh, twenty eight hundred bucks at home. But I, I don't know. I mean, yes, if they can get pressure on Huntley, but I think Huntley's legs. I, I don't know how much. He's going to be doing crazy stuff uh, that opens that up. But, you know, he is a backup. I can see the reason for it. And I don't mind the Panthers, who I think may get a little bit of love. I don't even mind playing with Geno. Um, just because I can create a turnover, a pick six, that wouldn't shock me. I don't know that I get down to there, but if you're really looking for a cheap, I'd rather go to Chigo over on tight end at 2700 and be able to pay up for a 49ers Cowboys type deal or, or maybe eat some of the chalk with Steelers as well. Some gut feel plays I like. Speaking of Huntley, I do like him. Fifty five hundred bucks. Um, we know if you can create time, the Pittsburgh secondary is not great right now. Now with Watt back, it's incredible what he brings to that team. But if he can, if his legs can allow him to create a little bit of time, I think you could see a decent game for you know Andrews or one of the wide receivers. I'm not looking to play him, but I don't mind Huntley at fifty five hundred bucks, especially because it gives you a direct pivot off like. One of the chalkier guys, Goff, who's 5,600. Again, super large field MME, multi or <clears throat> Millie Maker type deal. But, you know, a gut feel that I don't mind playing some Huntley this week. I like Pollard, especially over Zeke. I think they're probably going to pop up quite a bit um, between the two of them. This situation, I do like Pollard. Uh, I like Chubb. Kind of let some people down last week. I think people thought that he would smash against Houston. They'd be up big. He'd run a lot. Um, didn't do it since he can struggle against a run as well. I, I would assume uh, you want to know what that gets you, but Cleveland would want to take as much off Deshaun's plate as he continues to wear off the rust and all that kind of stuff as they can and slow down the Bengals offense. So you don't want him on the field. You want to run the ball. So I, I think hunt could be involved. I don't know that I get to hunt for 4,600, but Chubb's going to be a super low owned uh, pivot this week off a lot of that chalk at running back. So seven eight hundred bucks, if your lineup can make it, I don't mind it. ATN, I'll go back there uh, against. I know it's against Tennessee. I still don't mind it. I guess the one thing would be like watch for the make sure Lawrence is playing. This is assuming Lawrence plays. If Lawrence is out, I probably stay away from all Jacksonville. But if he is playing, which I think he will. I don't mind ATN, 6400 bucks. He's in that zone that I don't think he gets a lot of ownership because the people will go super cheap down uh, to some of the guys we mentioned earlier or they'll just pay up to the guys that they really want, mixing all those kind of guys. Um, so he could be a good – he's kind of in, in a no-man's land pricing-wise. Probably could be 10% or less there. DJ Moore, I mentioned him a little bit earlier. I don't mind him, especially in some two-offs uh, in that, you know, if you do a mini stack with Geno Lockett, Geno Metcalf, uh, running back with uh, DJ Moore, I certainly don't mind that. M- maybe, maybe even Marshall or something like that. But uh, Moore's not priced that bad that I don't mind going to it at fifty five hundred. Uh, then Tyler Boyd. Now he'll probably get steamed up the more we find out about Higgins. But for five thousand bucks in that game, I-, I certainly don't mind him. Right now, I got him three or four percent. Certainly would be higher owned if Higgins is ruled out. Oh, excuse me. Even more so, I, I would almost, if it's later and later before we hear on Higgins, 
the more I would like Boyd because a lot of people, you know, just last minute stuff don't change as much. Whereas if Higgins is ruled out tonight or tomorrow, Boyd probably gets teams up more. It's kind of what I mean there, but I don't mind him. Main stacks I like golf, uh, Brown, Chark, or Williamson. Like I said, let's keep an eye on that. Um, and Swift, you know, just because of his pass catching role, mix and match there. Uh, you can get any any kind of combinations you like there. Burrow is the next one. Burrow, Chase, Boyd, comma, pause would be check Higgins' health. He's obviously in the mix if he's playing. Uh, potentially could go Wilcox, who would, who would get the start over Hurst, assuming Hurst is out. And then Trenton Irwin would get the would get to be the third wide receiver in if Higgins was out. You could throw them in there, uh, depending on if you think you need it. I think you could just stick in that Burrow, Chase, Boyd, and then maybe Mixon in, in, in a few of those lineups as well. Some mini correlated two mans that I like: uh, Dalvin Cook, Brown. I think if you just go those two and build around it, hope that they get the majority of that usage, which they could. Um, that could be different, you know. Do your Geno Smith stack, do your Burrow stack, and then try to fit those two in. I don't hate it. Uh, Pacheco, Kelsey, run it back with Hinton. I think that's a cool little three man. Um, getting some exposure to that Kansas City game, which isn't you know Kansas City side is twenty six point seven five implied team total right now. Probably what third highest, second highest on the slate behind Dallas. So I don't mind that. Uh, opposite of Cook Brown, you could go Swift Jefferson. I think that would be another way to get a little two man, then build your favorite other game stack around it. You know, again, Gino would be mine right now. Um, you could go Chubb and then run it back with Chase Boyd or just Chase or just Boyd. I don't hate that, assuming Higgins is out. Um, and then lock it more. Maybe you just go, I'm just going to, those two wide receivers go off. Metcalf more, whichever one you like better out of lock it or more. I like lock it right now. Um, Take two of the wide receivers, put that in uh, your other stacks that you're dealing with. Bo- uh, Lockett's showing – I got him at 6% right now. Moore's a little higher, 13%, but um, still what it be a little bit different. My sneaky stack, if you want to call it that, uh, it'd probably be the Geno one. I got Geno 5 to 7%, Lockett five, you know, 6%, like I just said, Metcalf right around the same. Um, and then even if you want to go Noah Font, you know, maybe one wide receiver with Font, I got him 3%. So, super low on doing a little Seattle stack uh, and then running it into some of the chalk, I think could be a good way to get different. My favorite against the spread lines right now, I like the Giants plus seven, Seahawks minus four. My upset of the week, uh, definition being that they are an underdog, would be Minnesota plus two. Um, I think I think a lot of people, some sharps and the public, are, are getting – a little crazy on the Detroit deal. Uh, and this is one of those weeks where I think some get cute. And, and I am I like the Vikings this week. I'm just kind of waiting on the scene where the number goes. Do I want to try to tease it up to an eight? Um, is it going to get pushed as high as three? I doubt it. You know, it's around two, two and a half right now. Um, do I go money line? Just say they win. You know, I think there's some options there. Uh, but I think they get the win as a quote unquote dog. I don't necessarily see them as that. But um, that is what they are as of now. Promos right now, underdog, dollar for dollar match, up to 100 bucks. Use the code GUP. Right now, they got the Battle Royal up for Sunday, $5 to enter, 225000 in prizes. They always have Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night um, slates as well. I have been going back and forth with them on the PGA. I hope to have an update next week. Um I actually, I think I got an email from them either late overnight or early this morning. Hadn't caught up with it yet, but I, my, my question with them was, are, do they plan on doing some kind of best ball for PGA uh, for the 2023 calendar year? So I hope to update that. That'd be awesome. They did this for the FedEx cup. It was a three week deal that I think was, um, I liked it and a lot of people did. So I'll update that next week. Pick them. Uh, this pays six extra money. My three for this week for, for underdog, I like Hawkinson over 48 and a half yards, St. Brown over 40 or 84 and a half yards, and then Chubb over 75 and a half rushing yards. The first two are receiving yards, of course. Prize pick, same code, GUP, G-U-P, same offer, dollar for dollar match up to 100 bucks. Link is in the description for both of these offers. Um, prize picks has a quote unquote free square this week. Um, one of the options they allow you to do is Herbert over 
a half yard passing. So that would kick off our little price picks. Uh, I'm going to give you six. If you wanted to do all six, it can pay up to 25 extra money. Uh, four of six and five of six still pays money. So assuming Herbert gets one yard passing, then you only really got to get three more or four more to make a little bit of money back. And if you hit all of them, obviously it's a big payday. I like golf over 260 and a half passing yards, Chubb over 75 and a half rushing yards, Hinton over 38 and a half receiving yards, Hawkinson over 48 and a half receiving yards, and then CMC over 96 and a half total rushing and receiving yards. Those are the six I like. You can play three, you can play four, you can play all the way up to six, pick and choose, add some of your own. Definitely want to get the Herbert one. That's a free square. Um, so click that link deposit get in there get your picks in uh, let's see if we can win some money there this week again coin gets you 20 percent off uh any package including a risk seven day risk-free trial we'll be rolling out uh the new pga tools center uh at the beginning of the year as well as continuing to update that and the green machine lineup optimizer as we roll towards the players championship and the masters uh, excited to get all that out um this year College football bowl season, like I say, kicks off next week. I do have an Army-Navy play if you want to go check that out on the site. I know Bobby will be grinding out the slates. It is a different era in college football when it comes to bowl season. We've already been dealing with it a little bit the last couple of years uh, just with people that may go to the draft or whatnot. But with the transfer portal, it really – like I, don't, I haven't released a college football bowl game yet. Um, it's going to be a lot more once you get comfortable closer to the game knowing, all right, who's out, who's in – uh, so you got injuries to worry about. You got, are they in the portal? And some universities um, stance is once you enter the portal, you're done with the university until you make your decision. Um, even if you wind up coming back and the university accepts you back, some clear their locker out and says, you're, you're in the portal. We don't need you here right now. Some don't. So that, and that's just all, it's almost like Mac season again, where there's so it's a lot of work and attention to the details but with our group, with Bobby leading it, with his uh, bowl write-ups, and then the Slack channel we have in there, I think we have as good an advantage as anybody in the industry. And we typically do well in the bowl season, not only betting-wise, but the DK-wise. And so I'm looking forward to it this year. Um, reminder for those on PayPal. I haven't said this in probably a month or two. We're getting back to the beginning of the year, and our busy time for renewals um, is January, basically up to the Masters, because that's when we started, when I started the site back in 20 well I started back in 2018 but we started the uh, paywall side of it in 2019 uh, so we're going to come up on our fourth year of that if you were a paypal member you will be getting an email from us it's automated telling you hey we're, we stopped using paypal march of 2022 so almost a year ago here's your code to keep your pricing go sign up you're good to go if you don't see that, you can't remember it, you may have saw it, went to junk, you don't know, shoot me an email, support at gupscorner.com, DM me on Twitter, whatever. We'll get you taken care of. I still have all the, the data from all the subscriptions and all that. Obviously, that's how we're generating the emails to you guys. So no worries there. If something happens and you, and you lose access, you don't know what's going on, hit me up. We'll get you your code. We'll keep your price locked in. Uh, we just went to one processor back last March. And I'll be saying this for the upcoming pods because – we have a lot of guys that just are heavy on golf, right? So they may have missed it during the summer or towards the end of it. Didn't hear me talk about it. So I just wanted to bring that up again. I hope you guys have a great Friday. Um, this should come out around lunchtime, maybe a little afterwards. Uh, we'll have a good weekend ahead. Uh, have a good Friday and we'll talk to you later.